So much of our world appears random, even chaotic. These traffic patterns are a good example, but there are ways to make sense out of this apparent mess. Car, one person, not Cambridge. The first step is to make observations wow. and record data from those observations. Nine, nine people. These high school students are taking a traffic survey. They're determining the type of vehicle, the number of passengers, and the hometowns of the vehicles. Four, five, car, one, two, three people, not Cambridge. However, the information they gather will inevitably be incomplete and incorporate a degree of randomness. To cope with this uncertainty, they need tools to help them analyze the data statistically and to generate appropriate conclusions from it. I think there should still be some more newer cars, though. Just because when a car starts getting that old, you you know you have to get rid of it at a certain point. There's not too many 14, 15 year old cars. You have to put the medium down to six, though. Yeah. Like Reasoning under uncertainty is a software-based curriculum being developed by BBN Laboratories with support from the National Science Foundation. This course is designed to help high school students develop their statistical reasoning abilities by using real-world activities with which they have practical experience. The software is implemented on a Macintosh computer and acts as a tool for recording, representing, and manipulating statistical information. It has a spreadsheet-like interface to a database that can represent either categorical or numerical variables. With a click of the Max mouse, students can display summary statistics. They can also create graphs, like histograms, box plots, scatter plots, and bar plots. Most important, the software allows students to manipulate representations and to see the immediate effects of their changes. The Stretchy Histograms program allows students to manipulate a distribution and watch how measures of central tendency and variability change. The mean, median, and quartiles shown at the bottom of the screen will change as the bars of the histogram are moved up or down. Six to, six to go, so bring this one down. Um, bring that one down to like seven and then bring five down to five. Bring that up two, four up two, and then bring that one down to five. There. The sampler program is a laboratory where students can create a mathematical model of a population and have the computer draw repeated random samples from it. This tool can also be used to explore relations between sample size, the number of samples, and the confidence limits of an inference about the underlying population. This teacher found the software useful in his high school statistics class. To introduce sampling to the students, we used the population of M&M candies. Mm -hmm. And what we were trying to do is to get the kids to, or our goal was to get the distribution of M&Ms by color. In other words, what percentage of M&Ms is brown or yellow or whatever. And um, we first did that by having the kids just take a guess from their knowledge, and then we gave all the kids a small sample of M&Ms, which they tabulated and, and organized. And then we built from those small samples a class sample of a few hundred M&Ms from the whole class. And at that point, we let the kids revise their guess from this data that we had. Then we proposed to the kids that maybe the M&Ms are all equally distributed. And we did this using Albert, which is just a little stuffed bear, because it was we didn't think the kids would believe that because they know so much about M&Ms. And to model this represent, equal representation of the M&Ms, we did it in two ways, using dice, where we had the kids roll dice, and each side of a die, or each number of the die, corresponded to one of the colors of M&Ms. So the kids rolled the dice, collected the information, and organized it in a similar way that we did with the real M&Ms. Then we used the computer and the sampler software, which allows the students to visually see a sample being generated right on the computer screen. And we set
set up the population so that the colors would all be equally distributed. And then the kids were able to take samples and display them in the same way that we did twice previously. And by comparing these samples, the modeled samples, to the real M&M population that we sampled, it was clear that M&Ms aren't equally distributed. And so we were able to throw out that proposal because of the real data that we had. Shifty lines allow students to examine a scatter plot to see if a straight line relationship exists between the variables on the graph. Using the mouse, they can move a line around the scatter plot, and a scale on the side of the screen shows them how far their line deviates from the best possible fit. They can also select individual points on the scatter plot to see which data items they represent, and to delete them temporarily to see what effect they have on the fitted line. This statistics class found shifty lines useful in exploring relationships among several variables. We shot basketballs into baskets from various angles and distances. The independent variables were the angles and the distances, and the dependent variable was the number of accurate shots made from each position. The students accepted and were familiar with the relationship between the distance from the basket and the accuracy of the shots, but they were less comfortable with predicting how the angles would affect the results. The data was scattered, diverse, hard to decipher. So in order to interpret the data, we started by making a scatter plot on the blackboard. And when we looked at this data, there didn't appear to be any kind of trend or any kind of generalization we could make. But we were able to get some better conclusions by using the computer and the software to help us. You guys are doing 45 degrees? Oh, my line was went up further like that, because I did 90 degrees. Um, we had scatter plots done for 0 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees. The students were able to fit lines using the software, and as they moved the lines about on the screen, they were given indications of the closeness of fit, the correlation, and the algebraic equation of the line. When they looked at this, they noticed that there were certain values that were not anywhere near the general trend. These outliers were of special interest. The computer software allowed us to investigate them by looking into what their values were, and we discussed why such outliers might have occurred. But even more interesting was being able to delete those outliers from the screen and see the resulting change in the trend and in the line that was the best fit. In general, the strength of the activity was that the correlations became obvious from using the graphs. And the cause of the correlations was obvious because of their practical knowledge about the situation and the fact that they were comfortable with the activity. The computer is central to our approach to teaching statistical reasoning. It provides capabilities that would be impossible to offer otherwise and allows students to develop new dimensions of statistical understanding. The software makes visual statistical relationships, such as sampling variability, that are extremely abstract and would be difficult to understand otherwise. These visualizations are dynamic. Students can interact directly with statistical representations and get immediate feedback on the results of their modifications as in the stretchy histograms program. The computer also provides students with multiple linked representations, in which several representations of the same quantity appear simultaneously on the screen and change to reflect changes in the others. For example, when the regression line changes on a scatter plot, both the goodness of fit and the equation change to reflect changes in the line. Through these computer tools and the Reasoning Under Uncertainty curriculum, students learn to use their newly acquired skills of statistical reasoning in conjunction with their knowledge of the real world. This combination of skills gives them the power to answer statistical questions of importance both to themselves and to society.